Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, wherever you are in the world right now. Welcome to the first ever Risties Awards. I'm your host, Anthony, tonight, and we're in for a lot of fun, so get ready. Fifth Wrist has come a long way and has continued to grow as a really global community, um, so very closely connected now, and it would not be possible without all of you, that is the community, everyone on this Zoom call, but also people that can't be with us tonight as well. Uh, it's amazing to have such a community that we have right now. I think back to the first day uh, with Alex when we re recorded our first podcast and uh, I had just moved back to Adelaide from Melbourne and I really wanted to do something that would keep me connected to the Melbourne Watch community. Um, and, you know, it's safe to say not only did I stay connected to the Melburnians, but I also gained a lot of friends in the watch community from all over the globe, uh, which is fantastic. And I really thank you all for that. Uh, we dreamed and imagined that this day would come and it's finally here, uh, which is really, really exciting for us. Thank you for everyone that's come. And also thank you to viewers that are going to see this after. So without further ado, I will welcome tonight the watch regulator, Alex El Presidente of Fifth Wrist. You told me I had to remind you, you need to do a wrist check and a drink check. Oh, uh, fantastic. <laughs> Let's just get your mug up on the face first. Oh, lovely. Right, so, wrist check, uh, drink check first. I am drinking. Uh, Alex, do you be proud of me? I have, I have a carafe. I have a carafe. So, uh, I am drinking a yearling station from the Yarra Valley 2018 Pinot Noir, uh, which is fantastic. Nice drop. And uh, on my wrist is my Habring TZ21 on a really nice double croc, uh, Australian double croc strap made by Martin Carswell and Grail Leather in Melbourne. So that is my wrist check. That is my drink check. It won't be winning any awards or prizes later, but that's okay. Alex, over to you. Thanks, Anthony. Um, I'm so glad you're here doing this with me. Like you say, when we started doing this, um, it was yeah a dream come true, maybe a kind of strange dream, but a dream come true nonetheless. I'm going to do my drink check and wrist checks, get them over and done with. So I have my standard pint of white Russian, but I also, since it's such a special event, I've got a bottle of uh, Bollinger here, which I'm going to open up. Um, hopefully not take my eye out. And if I don't screw it up, I'm going to have a nice pint of Bollinger. It might take a while for the fizz to go down. So I've got the drink check, the most important part out of the way. Wrist check. I have my birth year Speedmaster on our lovely chicken NATO straps, which were created by the help, with the help of our community. Um, yeah, I remember starting the podcast with Anthony, but I remember beforehand him coming and having a meeting with me in Melbourne and saying he wanted to do the podcast with me. And he had one pint of beer and then he had a Coke Zero right afterwards. And I thought it's so suspicious, but I kind of pushed through and decided to do the podcast with him anyway. And it's kind of, I think it's worked out okay. And look up now, drinking proper drinks, wine. He's got a carafe there. He's crushing it. So thanks, Anthony, for being here with us. Um, like all our best ideas here, uh, it came about when we were drinking. We just done the JCB episode, or it was the kind of JCB after party. And I thought it would be a good idea for some reason. I can't remember why. I think Rob was talking about GPHG before and how we're going to, how they do it and how it's not really a proper thing. And they just kind of make up the rules and the winners as they go along. So I came up with the idea in the JCB episode to, to do an awards thing. And like all my harebrained schemes, nothing would come of it if it wasn't for all the guys in the Fifth Wrist community. So thanks so much to, to all of you for making this, this a reality. So first up, we're going to have the nominations uh, for... Was it Dive Watch of the Year? Dress, <laughs> Dress Watch of the Year. And our good friend, Klaus, Tapier okay. underscore FFM is going to be giving us the nominees and the winners for this. Klaus is, again, a very important member of our community. He's traveled to do uh, interviews for the podcasts, which considering the state of the world at the moment is uh, a very brave thing to do. He makes his own merch for the podcast. Like he's, he's everything you can want for, for someone who's contributing and he's wearing his hat now. 
So we're going to go over to Klaus and he's going to give us the, the nominations and the winner for the Dress Watch of the Year 2020. Yeah, here they are. First, the Moser Vanta Black. I've personally seen that at an AD one time. You have to see it to really appreciate it. It's, it's mesmerizing. It's, uh, this black is, is uncalled for. The second one is the Schwarz et Yen. Schwarz et Yen does a lot of corporations with other companies like Ming. Uh, here, this watch, the Roma Synergy, is a corporation with the Finnish guy, Kari Vulu. I can't pronounce it, but you, you know him probably better than I do. And the third one is the Longines Classic Tuxedo, which is a dress watch by its name. Um, a, a really great watch. Just look at these hands, how they meet the circles exactly by a tenth of a millimeter. Really, really fine. Um, yeah, and the community worldwide has voted as a winner. Can the Longines, see? the most affordable of all of these three watches and a very, very nice one, I think. Very good, very good. Well, thank you very much for that, Klaus. Uh, I might go over to Charith quickly. Uh, Charith, any comments on uh, this, this winner? And, and as, as Klaus said, this is from the community. So we didn't rig this, we didn't make it up. It was from what people voted for. Uh, Charith, what are your thoughts on, uh, on this piece? I think Roman's going to be upset. It's a huge win for the Swatch Group, feeding two of the darlings of the independent watch world. Um, but uh, yeah, look, I think it's an apt winner for for what we uh, all a lot of people are wearing today. It's a it's a bit of a it's got that penguin outfit look. Uh, it's obviously um, you know it's got a bit of vintage elegance to the dial uh, with that mid century style, the Art Deco style. Um, but you know. If you can get a watch that looks that good for under three k Australian, it's a uh, it's a winner. So yeah, yeah good pick, uh, good Everybody. stuff. And I think that's why the, the community has um has gone with that. So good. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you, Charith. Wait a minute. Well Drink done. chest. Drink oh. check. Rest check. Close first. Klaus. Then back to Charith. <laughs> yeah. Let's get. Oh, it of done. course. Yeah. Drink check. I mean, it's the obvious choice uh, for an event like this. Um, I've got champagne. What Beautiful. else? Beautiful. And on your wrist. On my wrist, I'm double wristed today because for an event like this, I have to wear my, my Oxen Junior Day Night, yeah. which I'm wearing since I picked it up in Switzerland end of October. It's on my wrist every single day. The second watch I have is the Longines, uh, sorry, <laughs> Hamilton <laughs> Khaki. Too, too much champagne already. Hamilton Khaki, I've bought this watch just to go with the fifth wrist strap as soon as I have it. Yes. Cool. Well, it's in the mail, so be patient, though. It's Christmas time and COVID. <laughs> no <laughs> Fantastic. problems. Thank you, Klaus. Charith, wrist check, drink check. I've got my uh, JLC uh, Reverso Duo Face on the white dial, and I've got a pint of Furphy coupled with, because I'm in my dressing gown, with a glass of Cavassier Cognac. Fantastic. Well done. Beautiful. All right, Alex, we're good to go? Yeah, good with me. Okay, next up we have, uh, you know, when you go to the Oscars, they often do, um, you know, some, some nice throwbacks to certain events that have happened during the year, etc. So we had a big event. We had our first ever Rob Fest. Um, so a big thank you to, um, to Sean for organizing it and for organizing the next one that's coming, I believe, early next year, but also to Dan from uh, What's Your Watch? Um, or Daniel for creating this video for you all tonight. So sit back, enjoy this. Uh, it's a lot of fun.
Uh, Rob Fest 2020, hey? I wonder where I get the, one of those T-shirts from. Fantastic. Uh, thank you again to everyone who organised that. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Good, good music pick too. All right, next up we have, um, if my mouse wants to work, fantastic. Okay, good. So we got Sean from The Book Watcher, who is going to present the nominees for Shitter of the Year 2020. Uh, now, Sean is an interesting character. He's uh, off screen at the moment, so we'll have to pay attention for when he does come on. But, uh, you know, I remember when I got the pleasure with Rob um, to interview Ed Malan and Sean, uh, Ed had said that people were giving him a bit of shit because he, he wore the same jacket to the last three video interviews. Um, and so Sean had the idea that we were going to all chip in and buy him this crazy jacket and then send it over to him. Um, but Alex said no. So, um, so that, that sort of backfired from there. But great guy in the community. Let's, uh, Sean's going to take us away for Shitter of the Year with the nominees and winners. Let's see the video. Da 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 I'm the book watcher. I'm gonna present the sugar awards. I'm drinking a gin light you tonic and I'm wearing a buggery octo. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done, well done, Sean. Uh right oh so drink check, wrist check done. That was awesome. Good stuff. <laughs> How's it going, gents? Nominees. So we'll be looking at the Jacob and Co. Supreme. Arguably, a watch that's released because Jacob and Co. Obviously, is still dealing with drug dealers and embezzling money, so they have to put shit out to get money in. Uh, your second choice is your Rolex Sky Dweller Oyster Flex, which is arguably the most complicated watch Rolex has. It can do constipation. It can do, you know. Leaky poo, it can do brown streaks. And your final contestant is the Rolex Sub 41. It's argu arguably the same shit, different day, different year pick. So uh, my bets on that one, but let's see who the winner is. It's Jacob and Co. All right. The community speaks. <laughs> Well done. Thank you, Sean, for that. Uh, well, let's go to uh, Wolfgang at Watch Style with a lot of underscores in the middle of it. You, you won't miss it. Uh, but Wolfgang, what are, your, what are your thoughts and comments on uh, this beautiful piece here by Jacob and Co? Or maybe some of the others as well. Well, first of all, please let me take some precautionary measures for this visual onslaught. Uh, and... At the beginning, I, I want to make the uh, drink check and the wrist check. Uh, I'm drinking a coffee made with this Italian coffee machine. And uh, I'm drinking a shrub. I don't know even if a shrub is known in Australia because it's a drink without alcohol. And uh, it's basically made out of vinegar you put berries into the vinegar, let it rest for maybe one month. Uh, then you strain it, uh, you give sugar to the vinegar, and so you get a sugary, vinegary juice. And this is normally the point where you put this juice and wash it down the drain and open a bottle of beer or wine. But not in my case. I'm drinking this juice with uh, sparkling water or mineral water. Uh, for me, it's uh, this year, my first year when I quit drinking alcohol, interestingly. This m might sound funny for, for you fifth wrist guys, because I know, <laughs> I know you, you really love good wine or good beer. It's also with me. I was a great lover of beer and great lover of wine. I drank... Austrian wine, French wine, Italian, Span Spanish wine, even Australian wine. And I thought wine is a perfectly drink. But 
in January this year, I decided to quit alcohol. My body told me I have drunken already all alcohol. Uh, a man should probably drink in his lifetime. And so I, th I thought, okay, I quit for now and let's see what happens. So on my wrist, there is also, Anthony, I have also a watch from Habring. Uh, it, is, it is the model uh, called Felix. Felix, I don't know if you, if you know that, it it's derives from a proverb or for, from a saying that, uh, that is, is in Latin and it is uh, to Felix Austria Nube. And this is translated more or less, uh, you happy Austria Mary. So Felix is not a name. Felix stands for happy, happiness. And it, is, it's come, it comes from the Habsburgians, uh, which ruled once Austria and many other countries. And uh, they spread all over the Europe and also the world by marrying. They married the princesses and the princes from other countries. And so they branched out. And now the Habsburgians or the Burger Kings uh, spread all over the world, principally. So, yeah. cool. uh, this is the story of the Felix. I was, uh, this week on Tuesday, I was uh, at the workshop of the Harbrings. I, I visited them because I had a little problem. My Felix fell down on a tiled floor and the crown was, uh, I could pull out the crown, you know. So, I visited them in Carinthia and... Uh, looked at the Felix Foudroyant and this is a wonderful watch next year there will be a new dial for it and I am thinking about buying one um, but they have a full order book you know you have to wait now five to six months for a watch awesome. so now for the so now for the shitter um, I, I think it is I think it is really justified to award the shit uh, to the Jacobs and Co. Normally, you know, normally the watches of Jacobs and Co. remind me on these merry-go-rounds. Uh, uh, we have in Vienna, we have a stationary fun park with merry-go-rounds and they scare me to death because all the times people are flying through the air and the chains are ripping and uh, the people are crisscrossing all over the ground. <clears throat> but this watch is something completely different. I think it is a GMT watch. It has like pictured here four time zones. And the most crazy thing is to me that all the time zones can be set by pushers. And, but the unreal thing is the names of the towns are written on the dial in a permanent style. So I think the wearers of this watch may think that there are only three towns uh, in the world. Uh, and this is really crazy. I have what I see here also from the layout. I mean, it is a completely it is a complete chaos. You see a circle, a triangle, a rectangle. I even saw a model with a pentagon, and that made me think maybe this is the watch, the, the goodbye watch for Donald. I don't, I don't know, but okay, it is a pure design chaos. What we what we see here, shape wise, uh, and yeah, this GMT with the fixed designations of, of the name of the, of the towns is just terrible. All other contenders are also very terrible. You know, the, the Rolex is one of the most terrible submariners I've ever seen. I, I think the Rolex was right in the 90s, but now it is, it is just not right. And the sky dweller, I'm speechless. You know, this is a flieger on a, on a, on a diver band, principally. So I don't know what Rolex is uh, thinking. Uh, but sure, of course, the Jacobs & Co. wins the prize. Yes. And that's all. Thank you.
Thank you, Wolfgang. Yeah, cheers. Fantastic. Well done. Yes, absolutely. A round of applause. We can do these ones when we're on Zoom, if you're on mute. Uh, thank you very much. That was a very in-depth, especially the drink check, and, uh, and good on you for, uh, for making the choice to give up alcohol. Take Alex, take some notes. Uh, righto. Okay. Over to you, Alex. I just want to take a moment to say, first of all, how unbelievably happy I am at how this is going so far. I don't think I doubt I've ever been this happy before in my entire life. Um, every award ceremony has a Lifetime Achievement Award. And even though this gentleman, JCB, great friend of the show, although he probably never come on a podcast ever again, still a great friend of the show, even though he probably has more Lifetime Achievement Awards than Hublot has limited editions, we thought we'd give him one anyway, and he'll probably have one next year, and next year, and the next year, and anyway. But here's a little Lifetime Achievement Award for my very good friend, JCB. Fantastic. Truly a worthy winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award, first one this year. Um, next up, we have another great friend of ours, Ed. You'll know him as South Slope NYC, great contributor to the site. Um, amazing photographer, amazing collection of watches. He's done over 10 reviews for us, so he's now officially an editor at large on the site. He even has this really cool little Pac-Man watch that has a joystick and he hasn't lost the joystick. So truly a great, great man. And he's going to be giving us the nominations for the best chronograph 2020. All right, guys. Um, first of all, drink check. It is 7 a.m. in the morning here in New York. So um... go for it. All right, let's let that play. All right, great. So um, I've got in my hand uh, an, a screwdriver. Um, not to let you guys down, um, even though it is quite early in the morning here. And on my wrist, I have uh, a Seiko 7A28 um, uh, quartz chronograph uh, analog display, kind of a neat little uh, movement inside. And now on to the nominees. Let me uh, get into character. All right, chronographs. Race car drivers have used them to break records at the speedway. Astronauts have worn them on the moon. I haven't used one to time my wife's contractions when she was in labor. We all love chronographs because we can always count on them during life's mission critical moments. And so my friends, it is my distinct honor and privilege to present this year's nominees for best chronograph of the year. First up, we have the Aquastar Deep Star reissue. Um, so this is a cult classic from 1960s, uh, known for its very striking dial and strong diving pedigree. Thankfully, it is a pretty faithful reissue, so it does manage to retain the charm of the original. Next up, we have the Speedmaster 321, so named for the famous Caliber 321 that went to the moon and back. And it was recently resurrected after being mothballed for over 50 years. It's also dubbed the Ed White because it's based on the watch astronaut Ed White wore when he became the first American to walk in space. And last but not least, we have the Moser Streamliner. Moser is no doubt a fan favorite here at Fifth Wrist, so it's exciting to see Moser releasing its first ever chronograph. And here's something I think we watch nerds will appreciate. The movement within is self-winding, but they've hidden the rotor on the dial side to give us an unobstructed view of the movement through the exhibition case back. A pretty clever design. And so the winner is... The Omega Speedmaster 321. Very nice. Wow, fantastic. 
Thank you very much for that. Um, great, uh, great discussion topics there um, for the nominees. Thank you. Uh, now we go to Rob, hard on my wrist. Any opinions or comments about this? Uh, arguably, I mean, I don't know how the Moser didn't win, but you know, whatever. Uh, any comments, Rob, about the uh, Amiga Speedmaster 321? I uh, just wanted to check if my mic was working first. I don't know if everyone can see me. Yeah, we can. All right. Yeah, I've had to go on my phone. So, uh, drink check. I have an Amaro Averna, which is a digestivo drink with a twist of orange. It's really nice. Uh, wrist checks. I can't see what you're seeing. So, I've got a Amiga Speedmaster. Very fitting, double wristing with my SKX. And today I am actually quadruple wristing. So my friend Luigi here has my Junghans Max Bill and my Casio F91W. <laughs> so to the 321, if you've got a list with a speedy on it, you're going to struggle competing. So I think they've really hit the nail on the head with a lot of cues between the bracelet, the movement. The only issue might be the, the foul patina, but I, I think they've done a, a really good job. So props to them. They've done really well. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, quadruple wristing. I don't know if we've ever seen, do we call that quad dueling, Alex? Is that what it's called? It is no. It, it is, is now. Ah, oh, quad dueling. Nah, Rob, Rob's got it. Cool. All right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on. So now I get to welcome the uh, international man of mystery. That is Scaramanga at Scaramanga on Instagram. Uh, so a uh, little bit about uh, him and I. We are uh, YouTube cigar smoking. Uh, sorry, not YouTube. Zoom cigar smoking buddies. Um, but one thing you'll learn quickly about Scaramanga is you go on his time. He made me get up at seven o'clock in the morning to smoke a cigar with him over Zoom, uh, much like some people have gone here today. But uh, nevertheless, a great chap, uh, very heavily involved, as a lot of you know, with Chronotempus, a, uh, a, a club in Spain that do some wonderful collaborations. I love following them on Instagram. Um, but over to Scaramanga to present the pointless product of the year, 2020 and the nominees are thank you well, the first thing i'm glad to be here with you guys and the first um what is that uh, lock you know rolex lock whatever it's called and the second one is the infamous Hodinki eight days travel clock so anyway uh talking a little bit about these two um i'd say the first one the Hodinki eight days travel clock I think it's more a problem where marketing went uh, really wrong because calling this or adding the word travel to this is like adding the word portable to a 33 inch uh, television uh, screen. Uh, th that's the first thing. Uh, obviously, I think things went really wrong for them when they claimed that they sold all of this um, in two days at that price, how things are currently going. So uh, they've become, they've made themselves a target. Uh, on the on the net for things like that, but anyway, I don't think. Well, it's a problem. It is an overpriced product, uh, considering that um, travel clocks or desk clocks. Well, I would say I would call it a desk clock. Do not sell really well right now. Actually, there's a very little market for that. Uh, the second one is the uh, the Loxia uh, watch clock, and uh, I think there um, they've managed to add a problem. Uh, to another problem, uh, which is um, uh, you just add a little more violence uh, to getting mugged. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, picture this. You're exiting your favorite nightclub in Ibiza at 6 o'clock in the morning, and then you meet, you know, uh, two fellows that came all over to, from Palermo in the morning with a Ryanair flight, stole a moped, and they only came here to meet your stainless steel Daytona. And... Uh, Obviously, they're going to want it um, at any cost because they have a flight back, you know, in two hours, probably on another Ryanair flight back to Palermo. And uh, if they meet some resistance, they will insist. So uh, apart from parting with your lovely stainless steel Daytona or Rolex or whatever, uh, you're going to end up with some pain in your body, uh, maybe even a, a stab wound, <laughs> probably. So, yes, uh, it is not a very smart 
product. Um, if you don't want to lose your watch or get mugged, you know, wear something that nobody's going to want to take. So anyway, uh, back to you. So the winner is? Yes, Luxia, Luxia Death Clock, a lock, sorry, a watch clock. Yeah. So, Thank uh, you. Nah, good stuff, Scaramanga. Um, thank you for that. I think you're right. I think you'll probably lose a hand before, uh, as well as losing your watch. So you're probably better off just not wearing it. Now, Rob from Geneva Blue. Wait a minute, uh, drink check, wrist check, Scaramanga. Oh, Scaramanga, oh, thank you. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, drink check, I have a Ximenez Spinola 3000, which is a brandy that they make 3000 bottles per year only. And wrist check, I have a, I don't know, can you see this? Uh, this is a gondolo Patek Philippe and your calendar. Beautiful. Now we got oh. a black screen. But you got a black screen? Uh, I know the what. Th that's the the problem is that I don't know. I I was cut off before, so yeah. Do we you have any this. other apps open that are using video at the moment? Nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, Should have got a watch with Lumen instead of getting a Patek. <laughs> Yeah. All right. That's uh, weird. Let me well, actually wait, 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 wait yeah. a second. Let me see if I can fix that. Get your face. Uh, we just no. saw it for a moment. Get your face in the. Yeah, there get your go. face wait, in there. Yeah. Wait. There we go. Can you see me? Yeah. We no? did see it for a very short second. Oh, he's being a tease. There it is. Being a tease. Can you see me? Yeah. No, no. Yeah, we nothing? can. We can. Yeah. We can. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Sorry. That's Thank it. you, Scaramanga, international man of mystery. Um, smoking a cigar. I'll be joining you later for a cigar. I have a very nice uh, Rocky Patel LB1 here uh, that will be, uh, hopefully the weather clears up outside so I can go out there. But uh, Rob, Geneva Blue, uh, what are your comments on uh, some of these useless and pointless products that we've had in uh, 2020? Well, you know, it's kind of, um, the both of them are sort of, it's a clock for Cox. Uh, it's a it's a lock for Cox. When I say Cox, I don't mean the I don't mean the cock. I mean like as in Jeremy Clarkson and uh, James May, when they call someone a cock, as in someone who drove a BMW and um, you know does burnouts. It's basically for people who don't have much self respect. I don't think. And <laughs> as Garamanga very very nicely put it, you don't want to you don't want to give an extra reason to these guys to. Um, to inflict more pain upon you. So um, I think it's a, it's a perfect winner. It's a deserving winner. Um, and the guys that come up with it, I think it's back to the drawing board, basically. That's all I got to say. Good. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> oh, I, have another I didn't do a drink say. check. Need... Drink, oh, check, drink wrist check, wrist go. check. And wrist go. check. No, 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 go, go, go. Go, Scaramanga. Oh, me. Okay. Yeah, there's just another thing. I mean, the, the entire, the point of all these new locks and, especially with Rolex, et cetera, is to make it easy to take off your watch um, and fast. You know, I don't know if, if this just defeats the purpose of having you know, a flip lock or, or a deploying clasp or whatever. Um, I really don't understand the point to this. Mm. So anyway, go on. It's yep. true. Rob, wrist yeah, check, okay. drink check. Um, I, I drink check first. That's how I do things. And I've got... Uh, Six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Uh, Waka Changi's ready to go. I think that's called um, and 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 a bottle of a uh, Nika whiskey from the barrel just to back it up in case I run out. That's called Penta Deca Gone Rist uh, Parked. It's not double parked. It's Penta Deca Parked. Um, I'm back on the Waka Changi's after all this time, after weeks and weeks of going without it. So I'm um, I'm enjoying it, so to speak. And um, is it quite also nice, double Rob? wheel? Right? Is it quite nice? It's quite nice. It's a quite nice beer. Uncle Kenny <laughs> would say it's a quite I thought nice that's, beer. Uh, I thought that's called a woodsy whenever you are surrounded by that many. <laughs> but you can't come. I, I, I can. Uh, well, it is called a woodsy. I might be, uh, might be woodsed later on in the evening. Um, I'm double, double wielding. I've got, it's a special occasion. So I've broke out my, my uh, swatch, my purple swatch, basically, which is uh, one of my favorites. And since it's an extra special occasion, I've actually got a watch out that I've never worn on the podcast or on any videos. And I got my AP, my jumbo, basically. Um, so it's kind of a, it's a watch I don't wear much these days. It stays in the safe, uh, but I love it. And I thought I'd get it out for you guys, you know. That's yeah. it. I'm so touched. 
by that, Rob. That's great. You never wear. I hope so. I did that for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Totally agree with all the points on the um, pointless product of the year. I don't think we'll ever be able to look back on the pointless product of the year and have a year quite as good as this one. The first year we're doing the pointless product of the year. We're, no, we're, you're, you're an optimist. We're so, there's always something, trust me. We're so very, very <laughs> blessed. So there's always a sad moment in all award ceremonies, like there's a uh, lifetime achievement. There's always a segment where we're remembering someone that's no longer with us. And this year it was the greatest living Scotsman. Um, who's now no longer with and is with us and has opened up the space for me to kind of fulfill my destiny as the greatest living Scotsman for the moment, depending on how well the after party goes, it might be short lived. And it's also someone who Anthony has confused with Roger Moore every time we've rehearsed the uh, the presentation. So it is Sean Connery, uh, Rolex, Samarna aficionado, and we're going to be remembering him now. Losers always whine about their best. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. Why don't you pick a category? I'll take legit now for 800. <laughs> That's let it snow. No, it's not. It's a French expression. Bonjour, mademoiselle. I'd like to see let it snow. Well, it's been a long time since I've said thank you to anybody. Thank you. Ah, oh, fantastic! Remembering uh, Roger Moore. I mean, Sean Connery. There, brilliant stuff. Oh, hang on. What's that? Uh, sorry, my producer's just talking to me. Hang on. Oh, there's another. There's another video. Just hit hit play. Okay, uh, we're remembering someone else now as well. Fantastic. Remembering a hodinky the way they used to be. Right gone too soon. Gone too soon. <laughs> Cashmere sales plummeting now. So sad. Uh, next up, we've got the best dive watch 2020, which is going to be presented by our good friend Thomas, Watch Symmetry. Now, Thomas kind of fits in very well with the, the madness that goes on at Fifth Wrist and especially in our Slack group. He's the chaps that registered the masturbatingmonkeys.com and the fifthliver.com domains for us. So anyone that goes to those website addresses will be redirected back to Fifth Wrist. So Thomas is here to give us the nominations and the winner for Best Dive Watch 2020. All right. All right. All right. So let me get ready for this. <laughs> All right. I can't see what those are. So a drink check wearing, uh, I have a, a coffee. It's early morning for me and I'm wearing the uh, Seiko SPB 149 in honor of, of this. So these three, we have uh, the UN Diver X, um, the Tudor Black Bay 58 Blue and the Ming Diver. The, the UN Div Diver X supposedly was inspired uh, from the brand's 19th century gimbaled uh, machine chronometers, but I really don't see that with the uh, the big X on the dial. It just doesn't really uh, say that to me. The uh, 58 Blue, interestingly, everyone said, oh, it's just a blue version of the existing 58. Um, but there's a lot of history there, right? It goes back to the uh, the old blue snowflake submariners. Um, and actually, I like the colorway. I like it not having the gilt um, aspects. And the Ming Diver is totally new. The thing that's interesting about it to me 
is um, that they managed to use their same design language and minimalist to design, but still have a very readable and usable uh, capabilities. And the other thing too, it's got a thousand uh, meter water resistance and it's 12.9 thick. That's pretty decent actually. Mm -hmm. All right, the winner is the Tudor Black Bay 58 Blue. Wow. Well done. Thank you, Thomas. That was brilliant. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. You're dead right about that, Ming, um, having the same design language. So let's go to our friend of the show, co-host. He's probably just as good as a host. Uh, it is uh, the, the man behind Tell Your Time and the wonderful products produced. So uh, Vinny from Tell Your Time, give us your thoughts on the winner of the dive category. All righty, guys. What a pleasure it is to be here. Um, first of all, wrist check is going to be a Helios Seaforth. Um, it's new to me, so enjoying that one very much and fits in with the dive category. I've got a Canadian club and a Guinness. So dual wielding, double parked, if you will. Wouldn't be fifth wrist without it. So I couldn't let you guys down. Uh, my thoughts on this one, yeah, I think it's it's a bit of a cheap win, if I can say, because the BB58 had already come out. It's it's just a new colour. It's a stunning new colour, but it's not exactly an entirely new watch. So I would have loved to see the Ming take it out because that's pretty spectacular looking. And like you said, water resistance is very impressive for such a thin watch. But I guess you can't argue with the community. It is a crowd pleaser. It's a fantastic watch on its own merits. So I guess it's a fair win. Yeah, fantastic points there, Vinny. I think I think you've really nailed that. That uh, you know, the, it, this is a community watch. People love it, um, and I think Thomas's point about how it goes back to the, you know, the the old Snowflake um, Submariners that Tudor had, the Navy editions for the French Navy, etc. I'm not, I don't know too much about them, but I know what they are. Um, cool. Thank you, guys. Uh, so now we have uh, Klaus is going to play us a little number. Um, so hopefully you're all going to be able to see him on speak of you. Um, but Klaus, if you are ready, can you please take away uh, what you're going to do now? Yeah, right. Uh, I've, I've seen the agenda that I could have uh, also have made a video, which would have been much easier. <laughs> I thought I have to do something live. So I do something live. I'm not prepared. It's all Benoit's fault. He talked me into it. I don't know how, but he talked me into it doing, a, doing a live show here. Um, if you if you want to edit it out afterwards, you can do so. Uh, a for a for quality reasons, that's for sure, and maybe for content reasons as well. Um, uh, yeah, for that show, uh, obviously, I, I decided to do something from an Australian band, and as Alex already said, I look like like uh, somebody from ACDC, which is coincidence. I just wear that cap because of the fifth wrist logo. Um, but yes, I did chose for an Australian band and I'm not, the dis second disclaimer is I'm not really a good guitarist. I'm not like, like, um, uh, yeah, the, the lead guitarist who gets all the chicks. I'm more the rhythm guitarist and unlike Malcolm, I'm not brilliant. I'm just bad, but I do my best and, uh, I hope you will enjoy it. And if, if not, as I said, just edit it out. You, you know, my watch is sunset. I do it every occasion to show that watch. You see the sun maybe here, and in two and a half hours' time, it will disappear. So there will be sunset at, say, 4.30 in Frankfurt. See me show my watch a sunset on your PC screen. All throughout that I can get, all you know that I mean. To the left of me, Rolex to the right. Got no gun and got no knife. Don't you start no fight. Cause I'm hard and cute. I'm really shite. Hard and cute. And I lose the fight. Hard and cute. I'm a power toad. Hard and cute. Watch me explode. Actually, I. I expect that, that you put your microphones on and do the oi part. Hey, that was the brilliant. Oi, no, 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 the oi part hey. later. In the second, in the second call, I, need more I expect you to do the oi. Uh, um, I have one oi. verse more. Oi. I didn't oi. have oh, to. Hang on, hang on. That's first, go. 
Go. I don't have to change much lyrics there because it's, it fits quite well. I'm dirty, mean, money and clean. I'm a wanted man. Public enemy number one. Do you understand? So lock up your speedy, lock up your one. Lock up your sumo and run with your life. LVMH is back in town. Don't you mess me around. Cause I'm hungry. And I lose the fight. I'm a power load. Watch me. Thank you. Cheers to you. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, Klaus. Mate, thank you so much for putting the time in to make those lyrics. That has absolutely made my <laughs> night. I'm sure a lot of others. Uh, well done. That was that was really really good. And there is no way we are editing that out. Any of it. Um, so bad luck. <laughs> all right, we continue on. Uh, this is the moment we have all been waiting for from the watch side of things. We've got some more awards to come, but the watchers will be finishing up in a minute. Um, so I'd like to welcome Roberto, a.k.a. Bob, a.k.a. Brownsville Watch Guy. Um, so just to let you guys all know, and, I, and I'll obviously thank him again later, but he has put together all these videos, uh, except the Rob Fest one, which was done by Daniel, as I said. But all this effort has gone into this evening uh, by Roberto. So thank you so much for that. Uh, and without further ado, we'll take it away for Watch of the Year 2020. I'll play the video first, and then we will get a wrist check and drink check and celebrate the winner. Hey guys, thank you for that awesome intro. I don't know if I want to take the credit for all those videos though, but I'll take it. Um, drink check, it's six in the morning, so coffee for me. And wrist check, I'm wearing my Pierce Marine Wing Commander on a red rubber strap and to go with my awesome tuxedo. I think I didn't get the memo though. Um, I don't know, it was like full black tie, so this is the only thing I had on. And let's go with the uh, nominees. So we'll do the Tudor Black Bay 58, which honestly, I mean, I think it's just a homage on their Na uh, Marine National one that they already did. And I mean, there's nothing new. It's just like Rolex, you know, same shit every year, just different color. And then the Bulgari Octo Finissimo, it's actually not their first steel watch they made. This is actually their second, but this one actually has a hundred meters water resistant. And the thickness of it, obviously, it's like, what, six millimeters. So very, very thin watch, awesome watch. And then this would be my favorite is the Moser Streamliner. I mean, gosh, it's beautiful, beautiful movement. The rotor, like, I can't remember who said it on the other uh, nomination. Uh, the rotor is underneath the dial. And actually something cool is all the chronograph functions actually work underwater. And if you just want to buy this baby, it's just going to set you back 40,000 US dollars. So, I mean, we can go out GoFundMe and we can go for it, guys. Come on, we can share it. Yeah. All right, the winner. The winner is the Bulgari Octo Finissimo. Are you freaking kidding me? This is bullshit, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> uh, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's get some uh, comments from the crowd. So JP from JP underscore Melbs, uh, you know, aka the uh, pocket shot king. Uh, what are your thoughts on this as the winner of watch of the year for fifth wrist as voted by the community? I think that's a perfect choice, Anthony. First, let me say that... Um you know, it's, it's a great honor to to be part of this like special event tonight. And I want to congratulate everybody involved for making it uh, such a great evening. So a great job on you guys. Uh, when it comes to the Octo, uh, I was hoping for it to win because I wanted to share a new watch alert with you guys. Oh, shit. Yeah, congratulations. Oh, so I was hoping it was going to be this one. And I'm super happy to join Benoit and I think another... Um, 
of the guys oh, whose, whose name I forgot exactly to join the Octo crew. So um, I'm very excited for this one. I can't wear it yet, actually, because it's um, I'm only going to wear it when my son is born, who is due in a couple of days, actually. So um, until then, super excited for this one. On my wrist today is actually the, the Lange 1815 up down. Uh, and my drink check is the uh, Ron Sakapa uh, 23. Look, in terms of the watch of the year, I think it was really, really close between the, the Moser and the, the Bulgari. But I think the you know the fact that it's now 100 meters water resistant and in steel just takes this watch to the next level. And I'm, I'm super, super stoked to to add it to my collection. So I myself am very, very happy with um, with the community's choice here. And uh, yeah, cheers, guys. Beautiful. Uh, thank you so much, uh, JP. And uh, congratulations on the new watch and we wish you and your family all the best for the safe arrival of your newborn in a couple of days. How exciting. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cool. So watch of the year, we got uh, the Bulgari. Um, I think I will hand back over to Alex. Now JP knows why I wouldn't tell him. What one second, watch of the one, year second one second, one second, <laughs> one second. Uh, Brownsville, Brownsville guy, is that my, my uh, Cuate de Mexico? Hey, que onda? Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico, cabrones! All right, Michael, mute Sorry. them now. Mute them now. Mute them now. <laughs> nah, that's good. Uh, okay, Alex. Um, yeah, congratulations to JP on the watch. And as for a child's name, Wakachangi is good for a boy or a girl. So uh, have a think about that. Absolutely, Next. we'll do it. It's actually already, yeah, it'll it's be. Locked in. Locked it's locked in. His name. Um, next up, we've got the move on to the kind of important part. So we've given all the uh, the fictitious prizes away to the brands, whether they wanted them or not. And now we're going to get into prizes for people within the community, which is the most important part. Is you guys, the people who take part, you crazy bastards that make nights like this possible. Um, so we're going to go for the first one, which is the fifth wrist photographer of the year prize. Now, this isn't this is a different thing from the the ones that go out to the community and people vote on. This is just the people who run the site that that decide on on these ones. And I got a watch this year. I got a Seiko Tuna, and I loved it so much that when another one came up for sale on Starbuy, I bought another one. So this year, the photographer of the year is going to be getting whether they like it or not this beautiful solar Seiko Tuna, we're gonna be watch twins. So what an honor for that person, whoever wins it. So we're gonna go over to Benoit, our good friend Benoit Petit Secons, who's an amazing photographer, and he's gonna give out the, the award this year for the photographer of the year. Thank you, Alex. Hi guys. Uh, thank you for, for this show, I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, just to start, a wrist check. I've got my Dodan flyback with the countdown bezel on the hour of the wristies. So it, I've been counting down all this morning for the show to begin. And it's on a uh, double zero uh, fifth wrist, not for sale, the, the, the first strap made by Anthony. Thank you very much. It was, bris it was brilliantly. And on the drink side, I'm finishing my homemade cherry Coke with some cherry liqueur and absinthe, santé. And before I present uh, the prize, the, there needs to be a special guest for, the, for this prize, so just bear with me. She's been waiting for a whole hour. She might be a bit vicious. Snow! No! You're kidding me. <laughs> oh man, brilliant. Yes, Karamanga, I think we have caldo for later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Snow the hen, who, who has no. inspired so much bullshit from the start of the year. So I'll just put her back. With her. She's been waiting. She's a bit uh, But you have hello from Snow. And I just want to Hi, say Snow. thank you to all the Fifth Risk crew and for everyone that's contributing because 2020 has been a really shit year for everyone. And I think if it hadn't been for, for Fifth Wrist, for the reviews, for the podcasts, for this, uh, it would probably have been an even shitter year. So congrats to all, and thank you very much. 
Thank you, Benoit. That's very kind. So, concerning <laughs> the photography, <laughs> uh, it was a tough choice. The, the rules were to choose the best photographer from the reviews on the website. So I had to go through all the reviews. It was a very difficult, uh, there were a lot of great photographs, great photos. And one really stood out for all his work and all the variety and the risks he takes when he, when he chooses to, to do photos and to do a review on, on the website. So without further ado, the winner of the best photographer of the year is Ed at South Slope NYC for all his brilliant shots on his reviews. Yeah. Well done. I think you totally deserve it. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, now, Ed, uh, we're, unfortunately, you don't know about this, but we do. We are going to go to you for a few words, so I hope uh, I hope that's okay. But um, just a few words from you as the the first winner of the best uh, fifth wrist photographer of the year. Um, over to you. Well, uh, I will echo what Benoit said um, about this being a shitty year and fifth wrist being kind of like the uh, silver lining in the clouds. Um, I think uh, I did not expect actually to get uh, so deep into um, my involvement with Fifth Wrist um, when Alex Wrist reached out to me. Um, and, but I'm very grateful that he did uh, because it really gave me an outlet to uh, really distract myself from some of the really dark times um, that, that we've been going through um, throughout the year. Um, so I humbly accept um, this honor and thank you so much guys uh you are absolutely more than welcome so thank you very much for for everything you've done and contributor and an editor at large as well um thank you benoit uh, alex i think it is over to you people need to stop being so emotional with all the things like i promised anthony i wasn't going to cry tonight so if everyone can just like take it easy on the like life-changing came at the right time stuff, it would really, it really helped me out because I'm, I'm feeling quite emotional here. So it's the alcohol, it's, I, I need more alcohol. I haven't had enough alcohol. That's the problem. I'll cry. I'll cry at the after party. I promise. So next up, um, and I, yeah, Ed, thanks. Thanks for everything you do for the website. Thank you, Benoit, for everything you do for the website. You, like it's, it's great being just being friends with you guys. So, so thanks for that. Not to be too emotional again. Um, next up we've got, the writer of the year and this was a, a a prize that that was like the first thing that i thought up when i started the website was like how do we give something back to the people that actually contribute and it wasn't something that i mentioned at first when i was speaking to people and asking people to do reviews on the website because i wanted people to get into it for the right reason i didn't want like when i contacted people and said can you review this cool watch or that cool watch i never mentioned the that we would be giving away a watch to, to the winner, but always had it in my mind because I wanted people to come into this with the right spirit. And I think we've got in lots of people who have come into this with the right spirit. And that's why I'm glad to, to be able to give a, an award for the, the, the writer of the year or the review of, of the year. And we've got a, a special watch. It's being worked on just now by Michael Woods from Two and a half watchmakers fame and appreciating time with Michael Woods. You know him from those things. And also you know him from drinking too many wacka changis. But he's going to be working on this. And it's going to be a one of one legend diver. It's already a one of one legend diver, but it's going to be even more a one of one legend diver by the time it's finished. And it's going to be going to the person who wrote an amazing review, amazing title. I know we all really, really enjoyed it. It's a bit of a pointless review because it's not a, it's not a, a review for a watch you can buy anymore, at least not new, but it is uh, an amazing review, an amazing read. He's a great storyteller. So the award goes to Pippi for Do You Want to Use My Dictaphone? Yeah, congratulations, Pippi. Uh, now, where is Pippi? I can't see him, but uh, you're going to need to take yourself off mute and uh, give I'm us you guys. the speech. <laughs> Well, well, I've got a bit of a tear in my eye now as well. That's um, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, well, first of all, drink uh, drink check. I've got a, a Rioja Grand Reserva on the go that I've been saving for today. Uh, wrist check. I don't have that one on, unfortunately. Wonderful. I have, wonderful. I have a um, 
uh, uh, Grand Seiko 5645-7000 from uh, 1971 that I rebuilt earlier this year. So, um, wow, um, yeah, wow. <laughs> uh, I, I can echo Benoit's uh, comments earlier. I mean, thanks for everything you guys do in the website it, 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 and and the the podcast. It, it's it's helped a lot this year, which has been an awful year, and uh, and I'm a bit speechless, which is very unlike me. So. <laughs> So uh, thank you very much. Oh, and I've also got um, snow with me as well a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, wow. Hey, very cool. <laughs> right, just in time. So, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys. You, everything you do is amazing and, and keep it up. And I, I'm, I'm honoured that you chose my, my review because there's some amazing writing on the website. So thank you very much and, and cheers, everyone. Well said, well said, Phil. Um, so, Alex, I think uh, we're getting towards the end of the show now. So, um, did you want to say anything else, Alex, before I start to wrap up? Alex? we've lost Alex. All right. I'll start to wrap up. How about that? Okay. So I, um, you know, what a, what a fantastic group of watchers, fantastic group of people. Um, and you know, like, you know, echoing what the guys have said, it has been a pretty shitty year for everyone. Um, I'm still looking for a job. Um, but, uh, I'm sure I'll find one, but you know, for, for everyone around the world and, you know, we've had this outlet as Benoit said, and everyone else has echoed, it's just fantastic. So thank you to everyone. Uh, but I do have some thank yous. Um, here's something I prepared earlier. So, uh, firstly, I want to thank all the presenters tonight and all the people that commented because it's not easy. And, um, you know, there's some nerves and all that kind of stuff. So thank you very much for making this possible and, and, you know, coming on and, and, doing what you've done tonight because it's made it a lot of fun for us. So thank you. Uh, secondly, to all the people who have prepared things for this event, there's been a lot of hard work that has gone into this, uh, in particularly uh, to Benoit uh, at Petit Seconds, to Roberto, um, Bob or uh, Brownsville watch guy uh, for making all those videos, um, which were honestly, they were fantastic. They made it a lot of fun. And, uh, and also to Daniel uh, for, uh, at Watts Watch for creating the video of um, the Rob Fest as well. So thank you to all those guys. A humongous thank you to all the writers who uh, make the website possible. Um, yes, yeah, someone manages the website, uh, but without the writers, we don't have anything. We don't have a community. We don't, we, we've got nothing. Um, so to, to all those people that add value to the community and, and here's a stat that you may or may not know, but we've actually got over 300 contributors to the reviews on the website, uh, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you uh, for that. Our editors at large who have uh, put in so much effort, um, completed over 10 reviews this year of their own collections or watches that they've experienced. Um, amazing stuff, guys. <laughs> really appreciate it i'll keep going because there's plenty more uh the hosts on all the podcast shows uh we have the host we've got the co-hosts we've got the guests so i don't think i don't know that people realize how much preparation goes into a podcast maybe not rob and the regulator but the rest of the shows have quite a lot of preparation so um you know <laughs> we've uh, we've got that we've got the preparation we've got the podcast we've got the editing we we put on the the post to the website to the story so to all the hosts and co-hosts and guests that have come on we have had a magical year with wonderful people talking about some really relevant things um, and all of your efforts does not go unnoticed so thank you uh, and finally to Alex, the watch regulator and El Presidente of Fifth Wrist, we, with whom, uh, to, whom without, we would not have this fantastic global community of passionate watch lovers and enthusiasts. And, you know, I, I always say that, um, you know, I, I, I came for the watchers, but I stayed for the people. And it's really true with everyone on this. Uh, and before I do my very famous, now famous last line, Alex, is there anything else you want to add to this tonight? I thought I was going to be cut off there. Like my, I didn't plug my laptop in and suddenly just everything shut down. So I'm so glad <laughs> I got back in. I'm so glad this is going to be recorded as well so I can check out what Pippi had to, to say. Um, hopefully it's kind of helped me 
not cry so i missed out on all that stuff as well um yeah thanks to everyone for for taking part thanks to my dear mother for editing lots of reviews on the website um like anthony says like it's all about the community it's all about you guys it's all about making friends like and i know i use this line on the podcast all the time but i'm talking about nice chats like pretty much all you guys that started off with me having a nice chat with you started off with talking for like an hour two hours pretty soon it's two o'clock in the morning i'm thinking how am i going to change these batteries and these fine swiss watches tomorrow like i'm not getting enough sleep but i'm staying up all night talking to guys all over the world about your watches and eventually getting to know you and being friends with you um so yeah thanks everyone for for taking part like i, I really owe you one cool Thank you, Alex. Well, everyone, that has been a lot of fun. Uh, we absolutely had a ball tonight. And, and uh, for the people involved getting this ready, uh, we, we had a lot of fun preparing this as well. So for everyone that's been on the show tonight, we really hope you've enjoyed yourselves. And for everyone else, stay on time. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, wherever you are in the world right now. Thank you for joining us for the first ever Risties Awards with Fifth Wrist and Fifth Wrist Radio. So I'll be your host tonight. My name's Anthony. Uh, we are in for a lot of fun. Okay, let's see what introduce myself. What camera do I buy? I want to buy this Nikon. Who's on fucking mute? Jesus. Okay, Woody. Oh, yeah, but Nikon is. <laughs> it's gonna be a re it's gonna be a retake okay let's uh we're gonna have to start that again i didn't like that one anyway so thank I you didn't <laughs> <laughs> all right i can just start whenever i want because we're already recording we'll edit it out <laughs>